What's up guys? A while ago I was able to get my hands on a plastic clone trooper armor kit from Imperial Surplus. I'll put links to their website and stuff in the description, uh, so go check them out. Um, but basically this is just a plastic armor kit, and I'm going to make a video series of just me going through the process of making it. So real quick, I'm just going to go through uh, all the stuff that was in the box, kind of like an unboxing video, uh, just to show you everything that comes in the kit. Um, and I did also buy a helmet uh, from the same person, uh, just to go along with the armor, so uh, enjoy that real quick. So this first box contains the helmet, and it is packed in there really nicely. The helmet is wrapped in bubble wrap, and then protected once again with a layer of packing peanuts. There's also some paper that just helps fill in any empty spaces, so it is definitely packed in there very nicely and it's not going to jostle around during shipping. When you're cutting off the bubble wrap, you'll want to be kind of careful not to cut too far in, as it could damage the helmet. All of the extra pieces, including the visor, are packed inside of the helmet, and there's even more paper stuffed inside to protect the little pieces. This helmet was designed with a clamshell method of opening it. As you may have seen, the back half of the helmet is partially pushed off of the front half, and this makes it easier to cut it off and then trim down the excess, and then just reattach it with magnets. It is designed this way to allow for people with bigger heads to get the helmet on. Clone Trooper helmets are notorious for having a very small opening in the bottom of the helmet for you to put your head in, so this kind of addresses that issue. Moving on to the main box of armor, and it's honestly pretty hard to believe that the whole suit fits in this box. suit is packaged in a very similar way to the helmet. It is surrounded by bubble wrap and packing peanuts and some paper. The suit basically contains all of the pieces that are required to build a complete Clone Trooper armor set. This is the animated Clone Wars TV show style, so not the live action movie style. There are a few things, however, that are not included with this kit, and those include a pair of shoes, the undersuit, gloves, a harness, as well as any sort of electronic pieces such as a fan or a speaker. Imperial Surplus does sell some harnesses that go with this kit, however when I bought this one they did not have any in stock. But not to worry, I'm pretty sure I can just make my own. I've seen pictures of the harness and it does seem to be just some suspenders with extra straps and velcro attached to it, and I've made harnesses for my other suits in the past, so it's not that big of a deal. I will also mention that some of the armor pieces have slots in them where you can put velcro so you can easily take them off and on. You will have to buy this velcro on your own though, and I do recommend getting white if you're going for a white clone trooper, or like red if you're going for a shock trooper. Just try to match whatever uh, the pieces are going to be. This kit does also include some extra sheets of plastic in case you need to whiten some pieces, but I'm about the same size as the creator of the suit, so I don't think I'll have to change any of the armor pieces, but we'll see.
So the next step after unboxing is just to wipe everything down with uh, like rubbing alcohol or something real quick. Uh, just to make sure all of the release agents that were on the plastic are wiped away before we start uh, sanding and grinding everything. I don't think I need to show too much of this process as it gets pretty repetitive, but I wanted to show you just a few pieces of what it looks like. I've just got some isopropyl alcohol as well as some paper towels and I'm just going to rub along the inside of each of the pieces to make sure that none of the release agents are still on there. If no release agents were actually used, then at least this kind of gets rid of any germs or brings peace of mind at the very least. I just read about this online, so I'm not positive if it's 100% necessary. So for the next part of this plastic kit, uh, we're going to be cutting out the individual pieces and just shaving off the excess plastic. This is made of ABS plastic, so it's more flexible and doesn't like snap really easily. Here's a little excess piece of ABS plastic. Uh, as you can see, like when you stretch it or stress it, uh, it doesn't snap. It just bends. So it's not gonna like shatter if you bend it the wrong way. It just stresses it, but it doesn't shatter it. So that's what ABS plastic is like. It is rather hard, especially in the thicker areas. Uh, it gets pretty tough to cut through. Uh, so basically what you're going to do to cut through this is you're gonna need a bigger knife, like a box cutter. And you're going to just Go around the edges, uh, but before you do that, you're going to want to mark out with a pencil where you're going to put it. And before you do that, you're going to want to take a Sharpie and mark out on an inconspicuous spot uh, where, uh, or I guess, which side the armor belongs to. So like this is a right, right hand plate, so you want to put R on the inside here, just so that you don't confuse it. Like, this would be left. You want to do that on all the pieces, just in case. I know some of the pieces like the bicep are pretty difficult to tell the differences, so you want to mark those before, before you cut them out. Uh, this is pretty obvious, actually. Uh, but yeah, so next step is to trace around the edges with a pencil. I'll go through that quickly. So there's like a groove like a low point where the pencil will just naturally kind of land in so you don't have to worry uh, about like getting it too far up here or anything just kind of go around the edge So when you trace all of that out and you kind of know where you're going to cut, uh, you can start cutting it. Uh, you have to be really careful though because like when you're cutting, uh, you have to put pressure on it and you don't want to like slip and accidentally cut yourself. I recommend using a glove. Another thing is uh, you're not going to cut all the way through it, you're just going to score it and then you'll snap it off. So don't try to cut all the way through. Just follow the line that you drew and just score it. Don't try to cut all the way through. You won't be able to. You will have to go over it a few times, probably. But 
your knife will kind of follow in the trail that the first one left. So you might want to go over it several times just to make absolutely sure that it will snap. I think I'm going to go around the outside first because inside is the thickest area. So you see the little score mark? You don't have to cut all the way through it, it just has to be close. And then, there, you can just snap it right off. It does take some force, uh, and if you, there's a lot of it as you can see, so it's going to wear out like your palm and thumb, but you have to do that all over the armor pieces. Just score it and snap it off. This exact same method can be applied to all the other pieces on the armor set. Uh, some of the bigger ones, like the chest, are pretty difficult uh, just because of how big they are, uh, and it's kind of hard to handle them, like find a good grip in some spots, but uh, yeah, same technique, just run the pencil along the edges. The pencil will find the lowest point as long as you just press it down, so don't worry about uh, trying to find that place to cut, the pencil will find it, just push it. To make it easier around some pieces when you're snapping it off, uh, you can actually score like corner pieces and just uh, it makes it easier to break it off so you don't have to tear the whole thing off at once. Like that. You just tear it off in pieces. It's usually easiest around corners. So it doesn't all have to be at once. But yeah, that's the rough cut. And uh, once that's all cut out, like the extra trim, then you'll go back in with the Dremel tool and smooth it out. And just make sure there's no excess. So that's it for this video. This is going to be a long side project, but I just wanted to get it started. If any of you have made this kit before, then feel free to leave any tips that you think might be helpful. Other than that, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye guys!